Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, in a previous video, we made this salicylic acid here um, through the hydrolysis of acetosalicylic acid, which we extracted from aspirin. Now, I used most of the salicylic acid to actually make phenol in a previous video, and that's going to be used for a variety of other applications, but I saved 20 grams because I wanted to make a chemical known as wintergreen because it's very cool, and I've heard that um, when mixed with sugar, um, dried and crushed, um, it emits light, which is triboluminescence, which would be pretty cool. And uh, most, quote, smash glow crystals are rather difficult to make. But this looks pretty simple to make, and I think it will be fun to do. So I'm going to try it, and if it doesn't work, oh well. Wintergreen is still a wonderfully minty smelling chemical, which will be very interesting. Um, and the actual uh, chemical name of wintergreen is methyl salicylate. So, um, anyhow, so we to do this, we're just going to need a bit of concentrated... Uh, uh, sulfuric acid, which we made in a previous video through distillation. Some of the impurities, uh, it was bumping in a lot while it was boiling, so some of it splashed over and discolored it, but it's pretty pure. Um, and then we'll need some salicylic acid and some methanol, which is sold as methyl hydrate, and I bought all that at, I believe, Home Depot or Canadian Tire. Um, and then we'll just need a uh, 500 milliliter round water flask and a heating mantle. So I have everything set up. So the first thing we have to do is add in our 20 grams of salicylic acid into our round bottom flask, followed by approximately 100 milliliters of me um, methanol. Um, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so after the methanol was added, as you can clearly see, we're left with a nice clear solution as all of our salicylic acid dissolved in the methanol. And that was done by simply swirling the flask around for a moment, and it dissolved quite quickly. So um, I'm going to use about 15 milliliters or so of this concentrated sulfuric acid here, which is of course slightly contaminated, but that shouldn't matter. And um, we're going to slowly add this to the flask. The reason we do this slowly is that the hydration of the sulfuric acid, um, it can be exothermic and could cause the methanol to boil, which is evident what's happening right now. Just slowly add it in. And there we go. So now that that's added in, we're actually going to have to set up for some a reflux. So I'll grab a reflux condenser, attach it in, and I'll meet you back. So I'm currently doing a distillation outside, so I'm actually using my um, distillation column, but that's okay, because um, instead we'll just use this fractional column here as a condenser. And just keep the temperature low enough so that the whole column doesn't heat up enough so that the methanol starts uh, boiling off. So, what's now going to be done is we're going to start heating this up until it refluxes. And refluxes, I'm thinking about two hours to do the trick. Now, um, the reaction that we're actually carrying out here is we're, rea we're reacting the um, salicylic acid with methanol. But the methanol is um, in quite a bit of excess because um, it's actually an equilibrium reaction um, producing the methyl sal salicylate, which is our wintergreen. Um, so to push the equilibrium so that it favors producing methyl salicylate, we added an extra excess of methanol, and um, then the sulfuric acid just helps catalyze that reaction. And um, the heat also speeds up the process. So, we'll reflux this for probably around two hours or so, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so after refluxing it for approximately two hours, um, I've just transferred it um, back into the heating mantle, but it's on low heat now. So what we're just trying to do is just kind of simmer away the methanol, because I don't see any uh, methyl sal salicylate right now, and it is actually an oil. Um, and it's not very soluble in water, but I'm assuming that it would be soluble in methanol. So, um... I, as we boil away the methanol, of course, then the solubility, solubility will decrease, and hopefully we'll start to see some oil collecting. And then we can separate that from the rest of the mixture. So we're just going to slowly evaporate this off, um, and I'll meet you back when it's down to a fair amount less, probably a third its volume or something. Anyhow, so I'll meet you back then. Okay, so we're back inside, and I just took it back on the ring stand here. And um, as we can, well, I guess you can't see, um, but I can see there's a little bubble at the bottom of our wintergreen oil. Now, um, this is still a bit warm from gently heating it and evaporating off most of it, but um, what I was worried might happen is because, like, earlier we added an excess of methanol so that we would tip the equilibrium to the uh, side so that it would hopefully produce lots of methyl salicylate. But um, as we evaporate the methanol, I was worried that the reaction might start uh, going backwards producing salicylic acid and uh, methanol, which would not be very good. So, um, what I did was I'm going to let this cool, take a separatory funnel, separate off the bottom layer, 
then transfer the top layer back in, continuing continuing to boil it down to see if we can get any more wintergreen out of it. I just want to isolate what I have right now, just in case the equilibrium um, and the, uh, goes the other way and the reaction starts producing um, salicylic acid again, which would be bad. So I'll quickly separate it out and then meet you back. Okay, so I transferred the um, liquid to a small separatory funnel and um, it formed into two layers and then I washed the uh, round bottom flask with a little bit of water and the layers became cloudy, but that's okay. Uh, this should still work okay because we're going to be purifying it anyhow uh, after this. So, the lower part is our methyl salicylate, so um, we can drain off the lower layer. And what's interesting is whatever impurity that is, there's a little speck of something, it's lighter than our methyl salicylate, but um, heavier than the um, upper methanol sulfuric acid water layer. So, um, it's floating at a rate in the middle. I thought that was neat. So, drain off the water or bottom um, uh, methyl salicylate layer, and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I drained our lower methyl salicylate layer and transferred it back into the separatory funnel. Now, um, I actually just discarded the upper portion because um, boiling it down, I didn't feel like we were going to get much more out of it because we actually had a lot of methyl sal salicylate um, that had collected at the bottom, and I was very pleased. There's still slightly two layers because I took a bit of the top layer by accident, but that doesn't matter because we're going to be washing it in the next step. So, I prepared a saturated uh, sodium bicarbonate solution, which is simply baking soda, and this will neutralize any remaining um, sulfuric acid. So, we'll add this in, cap it, shake it uh, with frequent venting, and um, drain off the lower aqueous or uh, lower methyl salicylate layer after it's been washed. Then I'll meet you back. Okay, so we will now need to set up for simple distillation. Because um, after we uh, washed our methyl salicylate twice with um, saturated sodium bicarbonate solution, we drained off the lower methyl salicylate layer. And as you can clearly see here, it's um, much cleaner. Um, it basically has no acid anymore in it because the uh, final washing was not producing any more carbon dioxide. Um, and it, it is important to frequently vent your um, separatory funnel or else you're going to get carbon dioxide buildup because this pr the uh, neutralization of the acid with the sodium bicarbonate does produce a lot of carbon dioxide. Anyhow, so the lower aqueous layer was drained off, or not aqueous layer, sorry, methyl salicylate layer. And um, you can see it's still pretty crude, but it does smell really nice. It has that nice minty smell, which is characteristic of methyl salicylate. Anyhow, so we can now do a simple distillation of this to um, purify it. It boils around just over 200 degrees Celsius, so um, we are going to need to heat it up pretty high, but we should be able to get a nice clean methyl salicylate layer after, or product after. So um, I'll quickly set up a simple distillation apparatus and meet you outside. Okay, so I couldn't find all my metal cut clamps for some reason. I could only find one. I'm not sure where I put the others. But um, I just wired the rest of the apparatus together with copper to keep it together. And um, I also greased the joints with sulfuric acid. Um, because it has a high boiling point and it should handle the high temperatures that the methyl salicylate will distill over at. And then down at the other end where it will be cooler, I just used metal cut clips. Anyhow, so, uh, there's just a sand bath inside of here as you can see, and I just have it on my camping stove, getting nice and hot, so that hopefully we'll be able to um, boil the methyl, uh, the methyl salicylate, it'll distill over, and then we'll collect it as our nice pure fraction. Now, um, I also didn't install a thermometer because um, uh, I don't have one that is good to that high of a temperature yet. I do want to order a 500 degree one online, that would be very useful, but currently all I'm going to do is just collect all the methyl salicylate because there shouldn't be any water in here. And then all the impurities should be left in the flask in the end. Anyhow, so I'll do that and meet you back. Okay, so after the distillation, um, a bit of murky white uh, stuff came over first, which is probably a mixture of methyl salicylate and uh, water, and uh, that was just discarded because very quickly after, and that was only like one or two milliliters, very quickly after we had a completely clear distillate. So, here is our final methyl salicylate, and I determined that it's approximately 12 milliliters. Um, and then here's some water right beside it, just for comparison. You can see how crystal clear it is. I think it's very beautiful. Um, anyhow, so yeah, that's basically how to make methyl salicylate from salicylic acid, methanol, and sulfuric acid as your catalyst. Um, remember, methyl salicylate is actually quite toxic, and as little as 5 milliliters is enough to kill a full-grown adult. So this stuff is really not something you want to ingest, but go ahead and smell it because it actually smells quite nice. It has a nice, uh, almost minty odor, but not the typical mint you'd think. I don't know, you'd have to smell it. It smells nice.
Anyhow, so we're going to use this to actually make something called Smash Glow Crystals, hopefully. Um, most Smash Glow Crystals that I've seen or heard of are actually really convoluted and complicated to uh, make. And uh, the chemicals are not commonly available, and you have to order them spe specifically for that. However, this methyl salicylate was actually made from aspirin, well, that's where it originated from, and from other household materials. And the only other thing that you need to make a particular type of smash glow crystal is sugar. When mixed with sugar, um, dried, and when the crystals are crushed, apparently they emit light. This is known as triboluminescence, and I think it will be quite neat to see. So, I will take this and do a bit of testing and probably make a video if it works. If it doesn't work, well, we just made some pretty neat stuff considering that um, this was done from household materials and it's a beautiful smelling odor like substance. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys later. Wait, bye.